Knicks Insider Fred Katz has given a massive update on a Julius Randle trade, and we have to talk about it. So what's up, guys? Welcome back to Knicks Digest. It's Chris here, and we're going to jump right into the video, as we always do, because Fred Katz was asked on the Low Podcast about a potential Julius Randle trade situation, and here's what he had to say. He said, I have absolutely no indication that the Knicks are trying to trade Julius Randle. None whatsoever. So he really emphasized that on top of everything else. And this does kind of tie into what Ian Begley was saying last week. I made a video on it last week. We're going to talk about a bit of that also. Because when you look at this Julius Randle trade situation, if you look at every single guy who starts on the Knicks, excluding Mitchell Robinson, and even if you add in Dante DiVincenzo and Josh Hart into that scenario... Julius somehow feels like the most likely one to get traded. Obviously, Brunson's not going anywhere anytime soon, or maybe ever again. He might be a Nick for life. DiVincenzo's obviously not going anywhere as the team's sixth man. Josh Hart is not leaving. He's on the bench. Mikhail Bridges, certainly not leaving. The Knicks just got him. They're going to try to keep him here for the long-term future, and he does want to take a pay cut to do the same thing that Jalen Brunson did. OG Ananobi just signed that massive extension. He's not going anywhere. Then when you look at Julius Randle, you assume, okay, why would Julius go anywhere? Obviously, there's so many reports saying he wouldn't. But it feels like fans keep insisting that he might end up trying to get traded. We've seen enough of this Randle trade scenario propaganda hit our just radar to where you're almost like, why is there so much smoke about this specific player getting traded? And it's because he's been the topic of trade rumors since his first season with the Knicks since the Knicks were so bad when they started with him that everyone just assumed they'd trade him off for some sort of assets and then he became really good and it seemed like he was going to be the franchise player then he plays badly again goes back into trade rumors and then Jalen Brunson comes is the best player and people are like oh what if they don't fit together trade Julius oh what if the Knicks need to get McHale and they have to trade Julius they'll trade Julius none of that had to ever happen I don't think Julius Randle is going to get traded at all. There's a lot of reports indicating that he won't, including some by Ian Begley. And Begley essentially said that Randle's excited about the Knicks and believes they can make a run. He's looking forward to being back healthy and with the group. He thinks things can be special with Mikhail Bridges. Also, his rehab from his shoulder surgery is going incredibly well at the moment. And also, Begley mentioned that Randle... When it comes down to it, some people in the organization think he could fit well with the group and others kind of think that his play in January after the OG on an OB trade supports that theory, while others are concerned about going into a season where he's a free agent at the end of the year. He has not signed a contract extension. There's a lot of reports that he probably won't be signing a contract extension any soon. And when you look down to it, some decision makers aren't as thrilled as some others about the general fit of Julius Randle with the current group. Now, you have to highlight here that in this post from Ian Bagley, he also mentioned, like every front office, not everyone is in agreement on a specific player. Now, there's probably a few players in the NBA who that you could say that about, that everyone's in agreement on what to do with him, which is either play him or trade him. The Chicago Bulls come to want to trade him. Everyone wants Levine gone, seemingly. The Knicks are another. No one in their right mind thinks that Brunson should get moved. Situations like that. Of course, because Julius Randle isn't someone who needs to get moved or someone who the team he's on would make no sense to have. He's also, like, that's not going to happen, so he's not going to get moved in the way that Levine would be. And also then, on the flip side of it, He's not an NBA superstar. Yes, he's an all-star. Yes, he's an all-NBA player when he's healthy, and that's phenomenal, and the Knicks have a guy who can be the second-best player on a championship team, especially when you look at how deep they are. He certainly can because they're a great team top to bottom. They have the best one through nine in the NBA, especially when they get an actual backup center. But even with Jericho Sims, there's a great argument they have the best one through nine in the NBA. And yeah, Randall can be the second-best player on that. I know there's the argument about playoffs, but that doesn't really make much sense. He was never really healthy the last time around. And the first time in the playoffs, look, he played 37 minutes per game and was the only offense on that team. The only player in that starting five who's on an NBA roster right now is R.J. Barrett on the Toronto Raptors. No one else is on the Knicks still. Reggie Bullock is still a free agent. Alfred Payton's out of the NBA. Nerlens Noel is out of the NBA. Yeah, he carried the team there, probably gassed himself out, and was also playing against the Hawks team that was just frankly better than the Knicks were, honestly, when you look at the team versus team situation. Now, at the end of the day, when you look at what could happen with Julius, you think, okay, he probably won't get traded. What's the deal with this contract extension? The simple answer is that Randall's just not going to sign a contract extension and some rush. 
because he knows he doesn't want to leave the Knicks. No part of Julius wants to leave the Knicks. Maybe he does want to hit free agency and get wined and dined by some teams. There's going to be a lot more teams with money this year than la- or next year than this year over the summer. So when you look at things, yeah, more teams will go for him than if he were a free agent this summer, which obviously wasn't even possible, but I'm just kind of posing this as something. Maybe he thinks it'd be kind of fun and he'd ultimately probably just re-sign with the Knicks. Or he's just fine with being on the Knicks and knows the deal will get hammered out, as Ian Begley seems to think. And that's not there right now. There we go. We're cooking. He understands, being Julius, that adding a backup center is important to the Knicks roster, and he knows how important it is for team president Leon Rose and the front office to spend their money finding that backup big to make a championship contender. The Knicks have success this season if that happens. Everything surrounding Randall's contract will work itself out. Now, that to me kind of feels like Randall would join the pay cut parade. Now, he kind of took one, his first contract extension with the Knicks, because he could have waited a year, signed a way bigger deal, but signed that deal because it was more team friendly. It gave him the opportunity to sign more players, such as Dante DiVincenzo and obviously Jalen Brunson. They would not have been able to get both. They would have been able to get Brunson still. Most likely they could have moved some money around and figured that out with how badly they wanted him. But it would have been likely they would not have had the money for Dante. And that's kind of why I mentioned him first is because that would have sucked. So shout out to Julius for doing that. But then also with the Knicks, with what's happening, and I understand Dante was on the mid-level exception, but the money gets weird. Second aprons, those were kicking into effect by the time that Dante signed with the Knicks. Just need to get out of the way before someone's like, it was a mid-level exception. But look, I get it. At the same time, I don't want Julius to get moved at all. Like, I could see the vision on why people might want to move him and go forward with this Nova Knicks thing. No. No, he was phenomenal in January. Why get rid of that? Why get rid of this type of player? Because it feels like he's the most disrespected player in the league. It's still not there. Oh, my goodness. We're struggling right now. But 24 points per game, 9 rebounds, 5 assists. The man shot 47% from the field. His three-point percentage was rising as the season went on when his volume of three-pointers went down. Only 29% of his shots this season were threes. That has gone down for most of the uh, most of his other years with the Knicks. We're really struggling right now. But um, he also shot over 50% from corner threes. He doesn't shoot a lot of them, but it still shows that he has the ability to. Now that number would obviously go down if he had more shots in the corner, but he's not there to shoot corner threes. That's why they have Mikhail Bridges and OG Ananobi and Dante DiVincenzo. That's what those guys do best. Well, OG plays defense best, but on offense, that's what they're all probably the best at. Now... Randall can work in the middle. He can use that. He could shoot even less threes, and that's just going to lead to him being more efficient. It is going to help the New York Knicks having this version of Julius Randall, having that January version of a guy who has the spacing to just really pound it down low in one-on-one scenarios and get more court spacing so he can kick it out to Brunson, Mikhail, DiVincenzo, OG Ananobi. There's so many guys. Deuce McBride, who shot 40% from three last year. Now Cameron Payne, who shot nearly 40% from three last season. There's so many good options that the Knicks have, and Julius is such an integral part of this team that trading him at all seems like a massive mistake. I do want to know what you guys think, though, so let me know in the comments down below. Like this video, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Have a great day, guys, and go Knicks.